not surprisingly, the one-sided but peaceful victory of America over Soviet Russia gave birth to the brief but widely shared illusion that the 21st century would hence be the American century, with the United States acting as the world's benevolent hegemon. Twenty years later, twenty years later, a truly comprehensive American global domination is no longer possible. That is so for several reasons. In recent decades, worldwide social change has experienced unprecedented historical acceleration, particularly because instant mass communications, such as radio, television, and the Internet, cumulatively have been stimulating a universal awakening of mass political consciousness. The resulting widespread rise in worldwide populist activism is proving inimical to external domination of the kind that prevailed in the age of colonialism and imperialism. Persistent and highly motivated populist resistance of politically awakened and historically resentful peoples to external control has proven to be increasingly difficult to suppress as protracted guerrilla warfares in Vietnam, Algeria, or Afghanistan have amply demonstrated, and as the rising turmoil in both the Middle East and Southwest Asia are foreshadowing. At the same time, the acquisition by the major powers of weaponry of increasingly destructive capabilities has made the notion of victory in a nuclear war among them prohibitively costly. That has prompted a degree of self-restraint that was absent in the pre-atomic age, age in relations among major powers. Last but not least, the ongoing shift in the center of gravity of global political power from the West to the East, dramatized by the rise of China and of Asia more generally, signals conclusively the onset of a historically new and more complex distribution of global power. In that much more complex historical and geopolitical setting, democratic America admittedly is still the world's most powerful, the richest, and the most influential state. Therefore, much still depends on how America conducts itself in world affairs. But to a much greater degree than in recent past, a great deal now depends also on the conduct of other major powers. We would all probably agree that any list of the contemporary world's geopolitically most important states would include America, China, Russia, not the European Union as such because of its lack of political cohesion, but more specifically Germany, France and Great Britain, and in the East, Japan as well as India. And of course, China, which I've already mentioned. Unfortunately, each of these currently most significant states is, in one fashion or another, experiencing serious systemic handicaps that reduce and constrict their respective capacity for shaping world affairs. To be more specific, today's American political system is increasingly gridlocked and unable to address effectively the country's serious domestic economic financial problems, especially those that are generating growing social inequality. At the same time, 
America's global legitimacy has been damaged in recent years by its, in, by its unilateral reliance on military power, especially in the Middle East, while its infrastructural renewal has been burdened by the high financial costs of prolonged local wars. In the near future, America's global influence could be further jeopardized by the likely consequences of any war with Iran. China, despite its historically unprecedented and truly remarkable modernization, is showing signs of internal political stress between its ruling bureaucracy and the increasingly nationalistic armed forces and of a growing restlessness among the younger portions of China's newly prosperous middle class regarding the political system's controls over their mounting aspirations.